Hey everybody, BS Outdoors here. So we had a couple of you asking about uh, this fur tumbler. So we figured, uh, you know, make you make a video telling you the size of the tumbler, the drop of it, also the size of the motor, the sprocket, everything you can think of. That way, you guys have a rough idea of what you need. You know, if you want to build one at home, and it, for uh, you trappers. Um, I see a lot of guys actually make tumblers, put their coyotes in after they dry them, gives you a better grade, makes coat nice shiny. So this might be something else you guys want to look at too. Well, like you said, you know, I use this right here to uh, soften the hides here during the tanning process, breaks them up, remove some of the oils uh, from the tanning off the coats. Uh, just really polishes up that hair. So what we got here is this is a one sheet of plywood. This this here's a half a sheet and the other side the half sheet. So that's what it is. So it's four foot uh, across there. Um, if you measure from inside to inside here it's 24 without the plywood on the outside. So and this is all a two by three frame with uh, two by four paddles inside. Uh, basically, I just laid a piece of wood down and measured, cut everything at a nice little angle, got some half inch, finished the, the sides all on half inch. If I was to do it again, I would have stuck with the uh, like three quarter because you get a little gap in between some of these, the half inch warped up. So, uh, a little bit about the drive system this out of the way. What we got here is we got a little uh, half horse on here and it turns with the Lovejoy and it goes into a gear reducer uh, right here. This gear reducer I believe this is a five inch little sprocket on here we just measured it. Number 40 chain and then uh, this down here is an eight inch and then it's on a one inch shaft with pillow block bearings and they're just bolted right in. So all you do is you just go from your points, find your center, and then you uh, put the shaft on there. And because the shaft does not actually go completely through because you can't have it go all the way through because you need it to be able, the hide to be able to fall. And it's kind of works on the same concept as your dryer in your house. You throw your clothes in there uh, it beats them up, takes the wrinkles out, makes them soft and everything for you. So that's what we're doing here, uh, just with fur. So there's two doors that can go on here. So we got the tump, the door that we actually put in there to tumble with. So we'll put that on there. And these just kind of hold it in place. But I also run, uh, run a couple of screws in there. You all can figure out, you know, your own system. Eventually I'm going to put some nice little clamps on here, but for now I'll just run a screw in each side uh, with these bungee cords on here and it'll hold everything together. So I'll leave the furs in there. They'll tumble for a couple of hours each time, break them up. The other thing we got here, once you get done tumbling them, you got to get all that sawdust out. So fit this up in here and pull these cords up over like that. And then as the hides are going around, uh, you turn it back on and they just keep knocking all the sawdust out. You let them run about 10 minutes or so. Try not to let them run too much more than that or you'll start to lose hair off of them because you won't have sawdust in your drum. So what you do is you just get a bunch of sawdust, maybe two, three shovelfuls, about like this. And you just throw it in there with your hides as you're tumbling them. Otherwise, if you don't have anything in there to cushion it, It'll just, uh, it'll actually wear the hair right off your hide. Uh, I get my sawdust through McKinsey. McKinsey sends it to me. Uh, it's about $50 a bag or so. So it's not cheap, but uh, you can see it's real nice, fine hardwood stuff. You can get cheap, cheap sawdust, you know, locally you can think of, whatever. But some of that stuff will actually stain your hides. If you're not worried about staining your hides, that's okay. You can go ahead and use it. Uh, some people use corn cob. Corn cob is a little harder to brush out if you got something with under wool like coyotes 
uh, things like that. So anyway, uh, let me throw this door on. I'll show you real quick. Start it up. It's just kind of a little bit of a switch that I put on the side. It works. I'm sure there's way better ways of doing it. But, uh, you know, that's just, just what I come up with in the garage. Is there anything different? Like, if you were to remake this, besides, you know, the half-inch plywood, you know, around the top and everything, is there anything else you would do to uh, yeah. make it better, I guess? So, the things to make it better, I would definitely... Uh, I would definitely got a bigger gear here. I would definitely went probably 10 inch gear down here to slow it down a little bit more because we don't need a lot of speed. And I would have got a bigger motor because you're going to see me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to help the motor start by actually grabbing this drum and helping push on it as it starts up. Um, this is just a dimmer switch like for a room and it controls my speed. I'll show you real quick. So when I go to when I go to spin this wheel, I'm gonna go all the way to the on position, just nice and slow. And then as soon as it starts to roll, I'm gonna flip it all the way to on. And as we go to shut it off, I'll slide it over towards the off position. So I'll pull up on here, get a little slack, start to move it. Motor takes off all the way on, and then. Uh, It'll sit there spinning around. It doesn't have a load in there right now, so you can see the chain just kind of getting slack and taking off. Once you get high and everything in there and you get a load, it'll uh, that top chain will stay tight the whole time. You don't want to get chains too, too tight, uh, you know, but uh, that's, that'll actually be really nice once you get some stuff in there. So I'll show you how to slow it down. So all I do is I start, start to just push it over motor just slows down comes to a stop and you can uh, you can watch your door and as it's coming around you can stop your door where you need it to stop at so um, but yeah that's what we got going on here uh, uh, and there it makes a really big difference so not a lot of that stretch and pull and stuff you just throw all your stuff in there and let them beat a couple hours you still will have to do a little stretching and pulling usually it's just on the legs and face but and most of it, uh, it it's, uh, just works out really good. So, but if anybody's got any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments below, and we'll try and take care of you. All right, guys. Well, I hope that uh, um, answers some questions for you. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, if it, you have anything else, um, or you'd like to see anything else, you know, with anything we have in here, I mean, we have PVC flushing beams, um, our hoist set up, anything along them lines, you know. Yeah, show them one of them. Yep. So this is a full season of him doing everything, buying hides, everything. I mean, it don't get messed up at all, I mean, compared to wood. But, uh, yeah, guys, if you would like to... If you'd like to see uh, anything else... Yeah, just let us know. We love doing videos like this. I know it's been a hot minute since I posted a video, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of losing the mood on the trapping, just waiting for the beaver, either waiting for really good ice or no ice, and the river to figure out what it's going to do. But until next time, guys, tight chains.